I recently made a video where I talked about 10 common frustrations for the Mac and how to fix them. And in this video, I'm going to talk about 10 more. Okay, let's get into it. The menu system on your Mac is incredibly powerful, but it can feel a bit overwhelming if you're not familiar with it. Sometimes you know a feature exists somewhere in the menus, you just don't know where to find it. There's a really handy and slightly hidden macOS feature that helps with this. So let's say we're in Safari, and I know there's an option somewhere to export the current page as a PDF, but I can't remember where it lives. I'm going to press Command, Shift, and the Slash key. That's the key in the bottom right of the keyboard. This opens the Help search. Now I'll start typing Export. As I do, you'll see a list of matching menu items appear. In this case, I can see Export as PDF, which is exactly what I'm looking for. If I hover over it, macOS will actually show me where that option lives by opening the correct menu and pointing to it with a blue arrow. From here, you've got two choices. You can move your cursor to that menu and use this as a way to learn where it's located for next time, or you can just click it directly from the help search and use the feature straight away. Oh, just quickly, if you also own an iPhone, you might be interested in the daily swipe. It's an email that I send out every single day containing a quick tip for the iPhone. It takes seconds to read and implement, and better yet, it's absolutely free. If you want to check it out, scan the QR code that you can see on screen, or click the link in the description. How often do you lose your cursor on your Mac, especially if you're using more than one display? My main setup is a MacBook Pro connected to two external monitors, and it happens to me all the time. There's a really simple setting that fixes this. Go into System Settings, click Accessibility, then choose Display. In here, look for the Pointer section. The first option lets you increase the size of the pointer using a slider. If you generally find the cursor a bit too small, this is a good place to tweak it. The other option that I'd really recommend turning on is Shake Mouse Pointer to Locate. Once this is enabled, the next time you can't find your cursor, just shake the mouse quickly. As you do that, the pointer will grow dramatically in size, making it much easier to spot on the screen. Let's say you're working in the Finder sidebar and you accidentally remove a folder that you use all the time, something like Downloads, for example. It happens more often than you'd think, and macOS is a bit unforgiving here because there isn't an obvious undo. The fix is actually really simple. Open Finder, then navigate to your User Home folder. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command, Shift, and H. Inside there, you'll see the folder that you removed, in this case, Downloads. If you're fixing a different folder, just navigate to that one instead. From here, you've got two options. You can right click on the folder and choose Add to Sidebar, or if that option isn't available, just click and drag the folder straight into the favorite section of the Finder sidebar and drop it where you want it. That's all there is to it, and your folder is back exactly where it belongs. In my Mac Tips videos, I usually focus on the apps built into your Mac because there's a ton of good stuff already there. But the reality is there are so many third-party apps that can take things even further, and that can get expensive fast. That's why I always recommend Setapp, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Setapp gives you access to over 250 Mac and iPhone apps under one subscription, and a few of them instantly level up your Mac. Take Paste, for example. It's the clipboard manager that macOS 26 should have given us, with a full searchable history instead of just one copied item. CleanShot X is an app that I genuinely use every single day and have done for years. It's easily the best screenshot and screen recording tool on the Mac. Ulysses is brilliant for longer writing. It keeps everything organized and all of your work syncs across your iPhone and iPad. And iStat Menus is perfect if you want to keep an eye on what your Mac's doing. CPU, memory, temperatures, plus loads more system detail right there in the menu bar. And that's just four examples. There are over 250 apps that you can get through Setapp, so you can find the exact tools that you need to get more done without constantly buying new apps. If you'd like to try all of these plus more, Setapp are offering an extended 30-day trial through the link in the description or the pinned comment. Here's a slightly random bit of Mac trivia for you. Volume on a Mac is split into 16 steps. So mute is basically zero, full volume is 16, and each press of the volume up or down keys moves you one step at a time. Most of the time that's fine, but there are definitely situations, especially if you're using external speakers, where one step feels a bit too quiet and the next step up is suddenly too loud. The good news is there is a way to get much more precise control. Instead of just pressing the volume up or down keys, press and hold Option and Shift on your keyboard, then press the volume keys. When you do this, each press only moves the volume a tiny amount. 
you've effectively multiplied the number of volume steps by four, which gives you much finer control over the output level. This works for display brightness as well. Brightness is also split into 16 steps by default using the F1 and F2 keys. Hold Option and Shift while adjusting brightness and you'll get the same much more granular control. One of the most common frustrations I hear from people new to the Mac is that files open automatically as soon as they finish downloading. So instead of an audio file, video or image just sitting in the downloads folder, it opens straight away. This isn't a bug, it's a feature and you can turn it off. Open Safari, click Safari in the menu bar at the top, then choose settings. In the first tab, which is general, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see an option called open safe files after downloading. On a brand new Mac, this is usually turned on by default. Switch it off. From that point on, anything that you download will stay in your downloads folder until you choose to open it. Let's be honest, if you enjoy reading articles online, the internet isn't exactly a great place these days. Between ads, pop-ups, and all sorts of distractions, it can be really hard to just sit down and read something properly. Thankfully, Safari has a couple of built-in tools that help a lot with this. The first one is reader mode, and there are a few ways to turn it on, but the easiest is a keyboard shortcut. Here I've got an article open, and as I scroll, you can see adverts all over the place. It's not a great reading experience. I'm just going to press Command, Shift, and R on the keyboard. That instantly switches the page into reader mode. Now I can scroll through the article with far fewer distractions and actually enjoy reading it. You can take this a step further as well. If there's a website that you regularly read articles on, you can set Safari to open reader mode automatically for that site. To do this, make sure you're on the website first, then click Safari in the menu bar and choose Settings. In the window that appears, go to the Websites tab at the top, then select Reader from the list on the left. You'll see a section that says Automatically Use Reader on the websites below, and the site you're currently on will be listed here. Click the drop down next to it and change it from Off to On. From now on, whenever you open an article on that website, it will automatically load in reader mode without you needing to remember the shortcut. Let's say you're working in Safari and you accidentally close a tab that you were right in the middle of using. Maybe you don't know the exact web address and Command and Z doesn't seem to bring it back anymore. It's easy to think that the tab is gone for good, but there's actually a really simple way to recover it. Up in the top right of Safari, you've got the plus button for opening a new tab. Click and hold on that for just a second. You'll see a list of recently closed tabs appear, including the one that you just closed. Just click it and you're straight back to where you were. Let's say you're in a folder in Finder and you want to know exactly where that folder lives on your Mac or you want to jump back a level, but the back button isn't visible. There's a really simple fix for this and once you turn it on, it stays on going forward. With Finder open, click View in the menu bar at the top of the screen and enable Show Path Bar. As soon as you do this, you'll see a new path bar appear along the bottom of the Finder window. Your current folder sits on the far right, and to the left of that, you can see the full path showing how you got there. You can click on any part of that path to jump back one or more folder levels instantly. There's one more option in the same view menu that's also worth turning on, and that's Show Status Bar. With this enabled, you get an extra strip of information at the bottom of the window. It shows how many items are in the current folder, along with how much free space you've got left on the drive that you're using. Between those two settings, Finder becomes a lot more informative and much easier to navigate. Your Mac always tries to pick the most appropriate app to open a file, but it doesn't always get it right, especially if you've got several apps that can handle the same file type. Images are a good example. You might want them to open in Photoshop every time, but macOS will usually default to preview instead. So you double click an image, it opens in preview, you then have to close it, open Photoshop, and load the file manually. There are two ways to deal with this, either temporarily or permanently. For a one-off change, right-click on the file and choose Open With. At the top of that list, you'll see the app that's currently set as the default. You can pick a different app from the list and the file will open in that app just this once. If you want to change this permanently for that file type, select the file in Finder and press Command and I to open the info window. Scroll down to the Open With section and you'll see the current default app. Use the drop down to choose the app that you want instead, then click Change All. You'll be asked to confirm that you want to apply this to all files of that type. Click Continue and the change is saved. One thing to keep in mind with images is that there are several different formats like JPEG, PNG and Heath. If you want them all to open in the same app, 
you'll need to repeat this process for each file type. By default on a Mac, if you copy some text from somewhere like Safari and paste it into another app, it keeps all of the original formatting. Sometimes that's useful, but a lot of the time it isn't. You just want the text, nothing else. There are two ways to deal with this, one temporary and one more permanent. For the temporary option, once you've copied the text, don't use Command and V to paste it. Instead, press Command, Option, Shift and V. That pastes the text without any formatting. If you're happy doing that each time, you can stop there. But if you'd like plain text pasting to be the default whenever you press Command and V, you can set that up as well. Open System Settings, choose Keyboard from the left-hand side, then go into Keyboard Shortcuts. Click on App Shortcuts and press the plus button. For Application, make sure All Applications is selected. In Menu Title, type Paste and Match Style. It's important that this is written exactly like that because macOS is matching it to the menu item. Then click into Keyboard Shortcuts, press Command and V and click Done. Click Done again to save everything. You can now test it by copying some formatted text from Safari and pasting it into another app using Command and V. In my experience, this works really well in Apple's own apps, but it can be a bit hit and miss with third-party apps. If you decide you don't like it, you can always go back into keyboard shortcuts and remove the shortcut entirely. So there you go, that was 10 frustrations for the Mac and how to fix them. What about you? How many did you know? Or are there any tips that you think I should have included but didn't? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.